call this meeting to order. Uh, if we could get uh, Ms. Montel, uh, roll call, please. Eloy Salazar. Here. Gabby Canales. Present. Beatrice Chuttle. Present. Armando Gonzalez. Here. Erica Mamey. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Um, safety briefing, Mr. Rendon. Where's John at? Uh, good morning, uh, directors. Uh, if there's an emergency, we'll all exit uh, to our left. I'll make sure everybody exits these um, board of directors room properly. We will report to the uh, transfer uh, station adjacent to the uh, clock tower. Marisa will make sure that everybody's accounted for, and I'll make sure everybody is properly uh, out of the building. Uh, three things is one, do not return unless it's all clear, do not utilize the elevator, and if we have to shelter in place because of a storm approaching or quickly uh, in the area, we'll um, shelter in place in the uh, west side stairwell. Thank you. <clears throat> Item three, receipt of conflict of interest affidavits. There were none received. Item four, opportunity for public comment. Did we get anybody to sign up? There are no public comments. Okay. Item five, discussion and possible action to approve the operations and capital project committee meeting minutes of November 15, 2023. Do we have a motion? So moved. We have a motion by Ms. Chato. We have a second. I second. Second by <clears throat> Ms. Canales. Any other discussion on this item? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Item six, discussion and possible action recommended the board directs authorize the chief executive officer or designee to authorize the purchase of eight ENC 35 CNG buses from the state of Georgia Department of Administration Services contract. Mr. Robinson. Morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Good morning. Started off, uh, I do have a joke today uh, that I'd like to share with you all. So anyways, uh, the other day I was in an Uber and I asked the driver, you know, how do you like, you know, being an Uber driver? The driver said, I love my job. I'm my own boss. Nobody tells me what to do. Then I said, turn left. <laughs> 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 and then turn right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I think you've all been in Ubers like that, right? <laughs> do you know where you're going? <laughs> so. <laughs> yes. Okay. We're going to talk about uh, purchasing eight ENC 35 foot CNG buses today, and I'll go ahead and start the presentation. The background of this is that we currently have 61 large heavy duty buses that range from 35 to 40 foot. Uh, 11 of those are diesel fueled, 50 of those are compressed natural gas or CNG. They're primarily operated on our fixed route uh, services where we have the highest ridership. They're also utilized for special events such as Dia de los Muertos, Beach to Bay, Buck Days, so forth. And, and also emergency services during uh, times where we have uh, winter weather or uh, tropical storm events in the, in the summer time frame. The Federal Transit Administration defines minimal useful life for these size vehicles at 12 years or 500,000 miles. The FAST Act was passed in 2015 and Section 3019 authorizes the purchase of vehicles from state cooperative contracts and that's what we're doing here. In terms of ENC, uh, they've been around since 1975. They started out as a national coach. They're uh, located in Riverside, California, where I used to work, actually. So I, I, we, we visited their facility, a few of us, um, including Mario Vega, uh, Assistant Director of Maintenance, and Derek and I, uh, back in uh, late November. Beautiful facility, um, really organized, state-of-the-art. Um, they're one of the 30 companies that make up the larger REV group that also produce emergency vehicles, such as fire trucks, fire apparatus, uh, recreational vehicles that you might take camping, you know, that kind of thing and then also public transit vehicles or other commercial vehicles. They're also used at airports such as the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, uh, universities, other transit agencies such as LA Metro, which is a very large agency, as you all know. Pace Suburban Bus, G-Trans, which is Gardenia, which is out of the LA area, and then Foothill Transit. Just, those are just a few of the agencies that have these uh, units. In terms of identified need, uh, the purchase of eight ENC 35-foot buses is required to replace an equal number of heavy-duty buses which have met their useful life. 
and, and it is time. So these buses have, have definitely met their useful life based on years and miles, so we do need to replace them. It helps avoid excessive maintenance costs or, or increasing maintenance costs. Also, it ensures uh, fleet reliability, um, better service for our customers, of course, uh, daily operations, and emergency response capabilities. And the picture here is one of our uh, uh, photos we took while we were out there at the facility. And this is a similar bus that we're going to get. This is a G-Trans bus that, that um, is in the picture here. Is that 35 feet? This one here was a 40-footer, okay. but it's going to be a similar shape and, and design uh -huh, for the 35-footer. In terms of the DBE financial impact, uh, there is uh, no DBE requirement for this procurement. The funding to support the purchase is uh, split up into uh, two different line items in the fiscal year 2024 capital improvement program. We have five CNG buses already in there at approximately $4.16 million. And then we have three electric buses that's in there right now at approximately uh, $4.57 million. Total budget available is $8,728,583. The total expenditures for eight uh, fixed route buses that we're looking to purchase here is estimated at $7,398,888. And it is uh, part of the fiscal year 2024 CIP overall project funded uh, amount. Or it's within the amount. The local match is 15% with an estimated cost of $1.1 million, roughly. Uh, federal match is 85% with an estimated cost at $6,289,054.80. And then total estimated cost, you know, as it stands right now, is $7,398,888. So breaking that down, the total estimated cost per unit is $924,861. In terms of recommendation for the committee, staff requests the operations of the Capital Projects Committee recommend the Board of Directors authorize the Chief Executive Officer or designee to authorize the purchase of eight ENC 35-foot CNG buses from the State of Georgia <coughs> Department of Administrative Services contract. And that concludes our presentation. Any questions from the committee? I have a question. So it's going to be federally funded. I think if you go back to that oh, slide, it shows yes. federally funded. So what's going to come out of our budget is just the $1.1 million yes, out of correct. the 8.7 or yes. the 4.1, I guess, for the CNG. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question, Gordon. The button. Oh. So, they can um, so what's the delivery timeline? Are the CNGs and the electric buses on the same delivery schedule? Um, the CNG buses are, are actually well ahead of any kind of electric order we do right now. Yeah, well yeah. ahead. We're, we have six actually that are underway right now in terms of um, in line at the ENC plant. And these eight would be an additional to the six, so we'd have 14 uh, when this is completed. But we expect it to be completed around the, the fall time frame. If yeah. <clears throat> so it's not to be understated that this is our first purchase of three electric buses, and it's Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Not to confuse. Yeah. What we're doing is, um, and, and this was based on some of the discussion we had at the board retreat, but we're taking the budget we had for the three electric buses and we're moving that into the, uh, the line item for the five CNG buses to have a total of eight. And, and we're, so com we're combining those two amounts in the CIP and, and ordering CNG buses is what we're trying to do. So all eight are CNG? Yes. Okay. That's, correct. that's, correct. that's where I this was confused. Clear, sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was like, we don't have the infrastructure yet for electric, but that, that was confusing. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's just yeah, how the, the reason we, the board and uh, conversations with our CEO was that um, the future for electric w was going to be difficult to bring the money from, you know, from DC. And that's why we're uh, leading more towards uh, CNG uh, buses. Now, it, they say nine months, but that's estimate time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it could be 10, 11, 12, but it, we're in line to get them around that right. uh, proximity time. <coughs> and then, <clears throat> as you can see, the bottom of the slide here, it says uh, per unit 924.861. And it says estimated cost because in nine, 10, 11 months, that price might change a little bit. And as, uh, put it on the recommendation, uh, Marisa. Okay, see, there, that's the reason we usually put a, a price there, but uh, we did not because it's an estimate uh, amount. And if we do, and the board 
uh, proves a, a certain amount, and if it goes up, then we have to come back. So it's an estimate uh, amount that we're looking. Hopefully it won't go up, but if it does, then we'll come back and report to you guys. So. And these are new buses? Yes, ma'am. Um, again, I'm less concerned about the timeline now. I know that was my first question, but I was, it was, I was confused. So thank you for <coughs> clear, the clarity there. Yes. I have a question. How, how does this affect, um, are these, these replacement buses part of our allotment of buses that we're allowed? So are these, I know that we're only federally allowed so many. And as we put, we can only put certain in service and out of service. Do electric count towards that number or no? Uh, electric would count towards that number. But okay. since we're sticking with CNG, it's, it's the same. So it's one and the same, okay. so to speak. Yeah. Uh, so we, we can go with CNG and, and, and be just as fine as if we went, went electric. Okay. And uh, is there any way that we might be able to get a report to see how many buses we might in the, so for future purchases and where we know how many we can purchase in the future how much of our allotment this is taking up uh, so that we have some idea of where we're at uh, I know that uh, I think I got that list probably from mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Acevedo about a year ago or mm -hmm. so maybe two year, a year and a half ago so I don't know what what this does to our list I just we, we, we will for sure so we're gonna take eight out of service <clears throat> with these new ones put these new ones so it's gonna stay 61 buses Okay, but how many do, uh, because we can only get so many, I mean, when we're replacing, what are we replacing? Are we replacing buses that were already not in operation, that could not be operational? Are we replacing buses that were decent buses? We're replacing we eight heavy-duty bus buses which have met their useful life. They're still in service. <clears throat> Until we get the new ones, then they'll be re replaced. And the reason is, of course, uh, so I think it's 12 years, but... Um, we have some from uh, 08, 09, 10, so that's, they're going into 14, 15 years. So uh, the higher, the older the vehicle is, the higher the maintenance cost. And so those will be the first one. The oldest ones will be the first ones to be replaced with these new ones. And we will get to a list, uh, Gordon, to make sure they get all the buses of how old they are and the mileage. And those will be the first ones to be replaced. Okay, and, and I guess because obviously it's important in our grant funds and stuff to, to replace with electric and things like that, I just want to make sure, I just kind of want to see how many were allocated because of our infrastructure and where we're at and if it's going to be a timely, we can do it. And then also because when, when it states it's reached their useful life, what, what exactly does that mean? I mean, is, do you all have a bar that says, hey, we're putting this much maintenance in as opposed to what we're getting, what, what, how do you define your term, it meets its useful life? We, we know the FTA uh, standard of 12 years and 500,000 miles, especially for these types of buses. So yeah. but we typically go over that, um, you know, because we can keep a bus operating, as Mike was just saying, we can keep a bus out there and, and it does just fine. But over time though, over a couple of years, that, that cost just keeps going up and up and up. So we do have increased costs we've been seeing over the last couple of years with these units trying to keep them operating so uh, and, and these are as um, as Mike stated 2009 2010 units so they're uh, they're 15 years now we're looking and so yeah, average of about 583,000 miles and that's an average across yeah. all those so mm -hmm. that we want to replace and one thing one one other thing in reference to cost of electric um, Right now, it's about 1.3 million, and as you can see, the cost for CNG is 924. So you're looking about 375, uh, 400 thousand different costs, and not only that, you have to build the infrastructure costs just to do to charge them. I, uh, so I just wanted to make sure that <clears throat> we didn't take buses out of service that we needed while we were getting electric, and we're still building the infrastructure. I know that. We need to do it. I just want to, because we're only allowed so many buses. I just wanted to make sure we were not kind of getting in some trouble there. Okay. Yeah. But we're not getting electric. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. I finally yeah. figured out how to read this. We're not getting that, electric. That, that, it does say. Put that there the to show that we're getting that the money from the electric. electric. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going with CNG. Okay. <clears throat> so there are going to be eight CNG buses. Correct. Yeah. 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 All <laughs> CNG. Look at the slide a couple. Any other questions from the committee? Good question. Uh, we have a couple of people, and those that are not on the committee, uh, you're welcome to chime in. Uh, Ms. Jimenez is on there, and I think Derek's online. So, uh, Ms. Jimenez, do you have any questions, any comments? No questions or comments for me. Thank you guys for including me. Okay. Well, 
every, any committee that uh, we serve on, I think every, all, if you're here, obviously we appreciate any input from anyone on the board, whether you're on the committee or not. Uh, one general uh, question and comment is, and I know that this is a large purchase, and it's, you know, and you all know where I stand on procurement, but at the same time, I also understand that this is a very specialized item. Could you kind of explain to me, and that way it goes on record, as to why we're going just with one source and not others? Uh, I know there's a reason for it, as, you know, I think the timing and being able to get them, and also the amount of people that can actually produce these buses, but I think for the public, because we're spending this kind of money, just to give me an overview, Mr. Rendon, you've been around a long time, or Derek, you're welcome to chime in. The basic answer is the cost and uh, also time. Other companies might take 18 months or longer, and so the main reason is the cost and also the timeline on getting these buses here to court as soon as possible. Did we get other I, people to submit proposals? This is part of a order that's, that had begun in, in, uh, back in 2022. So with that, um, we already had this in motion in terms of uh, the NC uh, and the state of Georgia um, contract. We already had that in play. So the, the real reason, too, is, is, is like Mike was saying, too, it, it's the timing. So, and, and Mr. Chairman, you, you alluded to that as well. We have six that are going to be in production this spring. So they're already basically teed up, ready to go. So tacking on these eight, we'll keep our replacement cycle on target. And, and we really need to be there with this order. And that's that's a real reason why we're um, utilizing the state of Georgia contract. It, it's been renewed, so we're utilizing that to, um, to make sure this order goes through in a very timely And that's something we can go buy off the shelf. So I mean, just for the record, just so that we have this uh, documented that we're not just awarding one contract eight million dollar without actually doing our due diligence and that's really the the reason for my question and that way it goes on record that we do do our, did do our diligence due diligence and the staff did do their job and and this is something that you can't just get an order today and get it tomorrow it, it's a it's a long process and you've explained it in in good detail anything else you want to add mr Don? oh well um well that was a good question to begin with uh the, in the history that I've been here, was involved with the RTA for 23 years. We've always gone with Gilly, and why Gilly? You know, they produce a good product, uh, reliable uh, buses, and so we elected to go a different different route, cost and timing, getting the bus in early. So we did. So we did make a change. Yes. After I'm just curious. Years. I mean, it, it's a big purchase, and mm -hmm. for the public to see that we spent that kind of money, I think at least we can have on record that we do do our due diligence, requested the information from staff, and they provided the information uh, that was uh, acceptable. Director Salazar, this is Derek. Can you yes. hear me? Yes, sir. Absolutely. You're coming in clear. The, the added thing I would say is we started to make the change to the ENC with our purchase last year, so keeping commonality within our fleet will help reduce the number of maintenance parts that we have. And help reduce the the, um, the costs associated by having the different parts in there. And yes, last year when we started this process of vetting the different bus companies, we did uh, consider all of them. You know, we're utilizing a state by board contract, which the FTA is kind of emphasizing to help speed up processes, we're able to get the vehicles much quicker this way. And when we started this process a year ago, looking at there were five bus companies, five major bus companies. Now the U.S. market is down to three, three bus companies, three. Wow. which is a reason why the FTA kind of called an <laughs> uh, emergency session with some of the transit leaders last week that I attended because now they're trying to figure out how to deal with this shortage of bus manufacturers, which is causing extended delivery times and increasing costs and all of the such. So we, we're trying to move quickly. That way we can uh, secure our spot in line and, and avoid any unnecessary increases to the cost. Thank you. Well, that's great information. Hopefully we can put that on record that way. When we make a large purchase like this, it's, you know, I'll be asking those questions on anything we do, but at the same time, staff has done an excellent job in providing the information, I think, that we should move forward with this. With that, I'll entertain a motion. So move. A motion by Ms. Chato. We have a second. Second. Second by Mr. Gonzalez. Any other discussion on this item? All those I just want to commend you for putting that on the record. Thank you. Because we're spending a lot of money. We are going to be scrutinized at some point. 
21.1. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, let's see, item seven. Discussion and possible action to recommend the board direction authorize the CEO or designate to authorize purchase of six cutaway van replacement vehicles from model one commercial vehicles from the state of Oklahoma contract. I have one question real quick, Mr. Robinson. These are all C and G, right? Is that correct? These are going to be um, unleaded. Or, or, I'm sorry? The purchase of these vehicles are going to be unleaded. Oh, they'll be gas. Okay, because... Because they're smaller vehicles. Okay, it didn't... It, it, it talked about both on the deal somewhere. Anyway, go okay. ahead. I'll let you go into that. Good question, Mr. Chairman. So we'll make sure that's clear in the presentation. Um, Gordon Robinson, again, Managing Director of Operations. Uh, the priority for this, as with the last item, is public image and transparency. In terms of um, the background, we currently have 57 vehicles that, that we call basically our R box, and that's a picture of one of them that you see in the picture there. And um, 32 of those are unleaded fueled vehicles, and 25 are compressed natural grass or CNG. <clears throat> it's the, the vehicles operate in B line, uh, B line service, and also fixed route services, such as Route 12. Uh, Route 34 and 35 in Robstown, and Route 4 in Flower Bluff, and those, those lower demand areas. In terms of um, the FAST Act, again, uh, it was passed in 2015 and allows for Section 3019 where we can purchase vehicles from state cooperative contracts. Model 1 is our dealer, and, and Model 1 Commercial Vehicles was established in 1980. They've been around a long time. Um, and um, they have 23 locations uh, nationwide, including in Irving, Texas. In terms of the need, uh, the purchase of six uh, cutaway van or, or Arbach vehicles are required to replace our 2012 2014 uh, Arbach fleet. They've met their useful life uh, there over the years, uh, as we're looking at almost 10 years now for those vehicles, or a little over. Also, for miles, uh, we're over by miles as well, according to the FTA useful life um, standard. The uh, vehicle replacements are in line with our state of good repair replacement cycle. And the purchase of the vehicles will, uh, as with the large buses, will avoid the uh, increase in uh, maintenance costs, minimize disruptions for our customers' operations, and also ensure uh, better reliability overall. In terms of the DBE financial impact, there is no DBE, again, associated with this procurement. Financial impact, uh, the Board of Directors uh, had approved four cutaway van replacement vehicles in our fiscal year 2024 Capital Improvement Program, or CIP. Uh, two of those vehicles that are part of this order of six in total are actually being carried over from our fiscal year 2023 CIP. So we're looking at the four that are in this current year CIP, they were carrying over the two from fiscal year 2023. So we have a total of six that we're gonna be uh, replacing. And the estimated cost is uh, $2,225,286. <laughs> The local match is 15% with an estimated cost of $333,792.90, and the federal match is 85% at an estimated cost of $1,891,493.10. And so these are inleaded buses, um, and uh, that would be our cost, the 15%, uh, the, um, the, the $333,792.90 that would come out of our local funds. The uh, federal amount is, is 85% as it's noted there on the screen. And the estimated cost per unit is $370,881. So, and that's a strong estimate. The uh, total budget uh, for both fiscal years for the CIP is 2299748 So we're uh, $74,462 under the approved CIP budget amounts. So that's, that's the great news with the store here. So we're able to buy six and, and stay within our budget. So, in terms of recommendations for the committee, staff requests the operations and capital project committee recommend the board of directors authorize the chief executive officer or designate to authorize the purchase of six cutaway van replacement <coughs> vehicles from Model One commercial vehicles from the state of Oklahoma contract. And just for the record, these are gasoline because mm -hmm. I mean unleaded. They're not uh, seeing uh, natural gas. Unleaded, sir. Yeah. Yes, unleaded. Okay, and not diesel. Not diesel. <laughs> okay. Any questions from the committee or those not on the committee? Go ahead. So, one, we take into 
delivery of the buses, that, the cutaways that we had, we've had a few pending for a while that have been multiple delayed. And what, what is the status of those? We have, we have taken delivery. Um, the, uh, the first seven that were on order with the Chevy chassis, uh, there's this one that's in warranty repair up in the Victoria area, but we have six that are in service now. Okay. And, and then the 13 Ford chassis, uh, we have them all down here now in our yard, and we're just going through some final punch items on those to get those into service. Okay, thank you. Um, are they, the ones that are, are we replacing diesel and kind of bypassing diesel at this point? Um, are some of our existing cutaways kind of are diesel, correct? Oh, no, ma'am. Oh, okay. no. no, they're all CNG. They're all CNG. Yes, so, yes ma'am. Help me why we're, I'm not opposed to CNG at all, but why we're pivoting to a limit on these, the purchase of these. Oh, I'm sorry. Dog on it. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty loud. I hope you all heard me. But um, are, why are we pivoting to unleaded versus CNG? Um, the CNG uh, vehicles were, <clears throat> the fuel burns hot. Uh -huh. And it was affecting the engine uh, okay. breakdowns, super early life of the engine and parts. Mm -hmm. And that's the main reason that, okay. that we're changing to uh, gas. Okay. Um, these, how long are these buses compared to the 35 that were just approved by the committee? They're approximately 27 feet okay. in length. Uh -huh. I think that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? And those not on the committee, Ms. Jimenez. And one general question just on the process of the procurement side. Could you guys explain that one as well on this one? Uh, sure. Yeah. So we're um, packing on to the state of Oklahoma contract. That, that's been in place for years. Uh, we went to the board, I believe it was back in 2019, with a large uh, ARBOC order of over 50 for approval. So, so we're still part of the state of Oklahoma contract that that started. Okay. So, so this is just a carryover is we're continuing to progress through through those totals to get to get the uh, Arbach fleet replaced, you know, as they meet their useful life. So so it's all in line with that procurement that happened years ago. And we're so we're just carrying in that in those parameters. Carrying forward in those. <laughs> Mr. Andon, anything you want to add? No, sir. Yeah. It's just it's just a question and, and again I, I think staff's doing a great job in making sure that we continue the process of getting the buses and the timeliness of getting them in you know when they only have so much lifespan and being ahead of the game so appreciate your input appreciate any comments that we can have on this um with that i'll entertain a motion so move we have a motion by Ms. Charles. do we have a second i'll second second by Ms. canales any other discussion on this item all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed motion carries um <clears throat> Committee chair report, um, don't have a whole lot. Just uh, how are we doing on the, I guess, uh, Sharon, how are we doing on the projects that we have going on on the operations? I guess we can ask that, right? Is it new business, okay. You can ask any questions, sir. <laughs> so needless to say, the rain has been impacting port airs. Um, we were actually scheduled to have the canopy pour on Tuesday, but with the rain, we delayed it. Now it's been rescheduled for Monday evening. I believe it starts at midnight, the 20, 28th, 29th. And it'll go for about 12 hours. I think they're expecting 150 concrete trucks. Um, it's a large pour because they're gonna try to do it all at one time. Wow. So uh, at this point in time, we're not seeing a percentage of rain for next week. So fingers crossed. Because once that pour takes place, then they're gonna pour the driveway and things will really start to move at that point, but we gotta get the canopy. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Once we get that pour next week, I'll feel a lot better. How about the, uh, how about the bear lane? Um, I guess we're looking at the architects or how's that coming? Yes, out? so we've gotten the um, qualifications back in. We're in the negotiation process for the fees. Um, once that's finalized, then we'll be able to issue a task order and move forward, sir. And we're moving with uh, trying to fix what we have or, or, or starting all over at Bear Lane? 
We'll probably be starting all over to be more in depth because we're trying to not only assess the windstorm risk, we're also looking at gauging the overall building's integrity and looking at does it make sense to try to renovate the existing or do we want to go ahead and, and take a look at building a brand new one? And um, so we'll have that assessment taking place as well in conjunction with that windstorm assessment. Very good. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you. You're quite welcome. Any other questions from the committee? Those not on the committee. Um, I guess meeting adjourned. <laughs>